Okay, today we're going to take a look at um, a little formal definition here of how you go about finding the area between two curves. Um, this is going to be part one <clears throat> in a series of videos that I do. And this first one just kind of giving you background information, how to set the equations up, and why we do what we do. Um, okay, so a um, little formal definition here. If f and g are continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and g of x is less than or equal to f of x for all x in that closed interval from a to b, then the area of the region bounded by the graphs of f and g and the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b is the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x equals d of x. <clears throat> okay. Now, to go through a little more explanation, I mean, that's, that's a bunch of fancy math words and explanations here, but <clears throat> we can take a look at a picture, and hopefully this is all going to make sense. Um, we are going to go about calculating the area between these two curves very, very similar to the way we did a Riemann sum. We looked at some representative rectangles, we added up the rectangles, and we, if you recall with the Riemann sum, the more rectangles you put in, all right, that you're looking at, then the closer and closer you come to the actual area under the curve. That's going to be true here. All right, so um, I have got a curve f of x here that I've drawn. I've got a curve g of x here that I've drawn. Okay, and then this is going to be my representative rectangle. All right, now each of these curves, with it being g of x and f of x, are in terms of x here. Okay, now the length or height of that rectangle is where, where, where we're coming up with this f of x minus g of x. Okay, now something about it. If I pick some x value here, and I plug it into the f function, it's going to give me the distance from here all the way up to the curve. So it's going to give me that entire distance. All right, if I pick that same number and I put it into my g function, it's going to give me the distance from here all the way up to the g curve. All right, so the entire distance minus this part right here then would give me what is left for the distance of that rectangle. So there's your f of x minus g of x. Okay. So, um, and then here we're saying in between A and B. All right, so there we go. We're calculating the area there. All right, now this, um, I'm setting this up for us to use our summation, all right, like we did with our Riemann sum. Um, X sub I, all right, is in the ith subinterval, okay? So it's just a sample one here, all right? I'm going to take a look at my area here. <clears throat> I want the limit as n approaches infinity, all right? So the number of rectangles that I'm going to do to calculate this area between these, um, two curves is going to approach infinity. All right, it's approaching infinity, which means I'm getting more and more and more rectangles, which in essence means I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to that area between those two curves. All right, now what I need to do is I need to sum up all those rectangles. All right, so I'm going to sum up the first subinterval or the first rectangle all the way up to however many rectangles I have, which is n, n is rectangles. All right, and I need to, for each one of them, I need to take the height times the width, length times width on that rectangle. I need to do it over and over and over and over. Okay, so f of x sub i minus g of x sub i. Okay, so this is just getting whichever inner, you know, the first rectangle, the second rectangle, the third rectangle, the fourth rectangle. Each one of these, this will, as I go through the summation, this will be the height of each one of those rectangles. And then delta x, all right, whatever the width, width is of each one of those rectangles, and then I will be multiplying the two of them. All right, so as I take the limit of this sum, all right, then I will be getting the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x times delta x. Okay, you also kind of have to think of the integral sign as an accumulator. It is accumulating the area of each one of those rectangles over and over and over until I get the actual area in between those two curves. Okay. So just a little background information there. All right, now let's take a look at how we're going to set some of these <clears throat> equations up. All right, now the uh, functions do not always have to be in terms of x. They could be in terms of y. So we've got two different scenarios going here. Let's go through this first one on this side over here. Okay, um, and I did swap up the uh, letters of the functions because I don't want you to memorize f of x minus g of x because they're not always going to be called f of x or g of x. Okay, so I've drawn another picture here. This bottom curve right here is g of x, or h of x, I'm sorry, and this top one is g of x. And this time, I'm not going to necessarily go in between their intersection points. I'm just going to do two random points, x of 1, x of 2. All right, drawing my vertical imaginary lines up there. 
I'm wanting the area in between right there. And I have drawn the representative rectangle. So it is a delta x. How wide that representative rectangle is going to be a delta x. All right, because everything has to be in terms of x. If the functions are in terms of x, I'm going to draw a vertical rectangle, so I'll have a delta x. Okay, I would set up that integral sign. I would integrate from x of 1 to x of 2. All right, and I'm going to take, gen more generically, I'm going to take the top curve minus the bottom curve. So it doesn't matter whether they're named G or H or F or anything like that. I'm going to take the top curve minus the bottom curve and d of x. All right, now you do want to make sure these functions will be in terms of x. So these values have to come off of your x-axis, and you got to have a d of x here. Okay. All right, now let's suppose that the equations are in terms of y. So I've done one of those over here. I might have a g of y and an h of y. Okay, so I've got a line and a horizontal parabola here. And again, I've just pick and picked two random y sub 1, y sub 2 values off the y-axis with my, this time, horizontal lines. All right, I want the area in between. All right, so that would be the area in between those two curves right there. All right, when the equations are in terms of y, I'm going to have to draw a horizontal rectangle as my representative rectangle. This will give me a delta y. How wide is that? rectangle, well, it's going to be based off that y-axis, okay? So again, everything is in terms of y, all right? I get my two points for my integral off my y-axis. The equations are in terms of y, and it'll be a delta y for my representative rectangle here. So again, I will be going, when I set my integral up, it's going to be y sub 1, y sub 2, and on this one, I don't have a top and a bottom, but I have a right curve minus the left curve, all right? So this would be my right curve, in this one, the h of y would be the right curve. My left curve is the g of y. So I've got to go right minus left. All right, that same concept is if I pick a number on my y-axis and plug it into the g function, it's going to give me the distance all the way across. Or I, sorry, and the h one, it's going to give me the distance all the way to the h. All right, if I pick a number here and then I plug it in the g function, it'll give me this list as this little distance right here. So I would want to take my right curve, which was the h function, and subtract the g function, subtract this little distance right there. All right, so um, good things to remember about how you're going to set up your integral when you're calculating the area between two curves.